putting your trust in Allah doesn't mean that you don't do anything. You just sit down at home and you say, oh, I put my trust in Allah. Go to work. No, no, Allah is going to provide for me. I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't have to work. Go to university, study. No, 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 I don't have to study. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to provide for me. But you have to do some action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to provide for you just like that. Look, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, when he told his people, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawm, Al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina al-Siraq al-Mustaqeem. Siraq al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وقال فرعون ائتوني بكل ساحر عليم فلما جاء السحرة قال لهم موسى ألقوا ما أنتم ملقون فلما ألقوا قال موسى ما جئتم به السحر إن الله سيبطله إن الله لا يصلح عمل المفسدين ويحق الله الحق بكلماته ولو كره المجرمون فما آمن لموسى إلا ذرية من قومه على خوف من فرعون على خوف من فرعون وملئهم أن يفتنهم وإن فرعون لعال في الأرض وإنه لمن المسرفين وقال موسى يا قوم إن كنتم آمنتم بالله فعليه توكلوا إن كنتم مسلمين فقالوا على الله توكلنا ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للقوم الظالمين ونجنا برحمتك من القوم الكافرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ما دي بالس. Welcome to another session of Fajr reflection. We are going to continue with our journey in the story of Prophet Musa عليه السلام and his people. And dear brothers, as you see or as you have seen, history repeats itself. The last session we've had, which was on Wednesday. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and after we have completed the story of Prophet Nuh Prophet Nuh alayhi salam Allah has said thumma ba'athna min ba'dihim Musa wa Harun ila Fir'aun wa mala'ihi bi ayatina fastakbaru Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Prophet Musa and Harun to Fir'aun and his people but they became very arrogant and as soon as the truth came to them what have they done they have labeled the truth to being something which is absolutely false. They have said, Inna hadha la mubin. In order to ridicule or to belittle or to criticize the truth, what did they say? They gave a label, they gave a name. They said, This is sihr. This is just a magic. And as we know, magic people don't take it seriously. It's falsehood. So they said, Inna hadha la mubin. And we've mentioned in that session, this is what the powerful or the elite always do. When the truth comes to them, they don't like the truth. Because when the truth comes to them, what happens is it changes the rules of the game. And when the rules of the game are changed, the people who are at the top, the elite, the powerful people, they lose the advantage that they've had. Because they are the ones who make the rules of the game. So when they are told what you are doing is wrong, your rules for this game is not right, they know that they're going to be disadvantaged. 
So what do they say? What do they do? They give the truth a label, a bad, a bad label. So they said, in هَذَا لَسِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ And also, what, who else do they ridicule? The messenger as well. The one who came with the truth. They always say something bad about him. For example, like what they said about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We know what they said about Prophet Musa alayhi salam. We, we know what they said about Prophet Nuh. All of them, they always give labels. Even today, when the truth, when Islam comes, the powerful people, what do they do? They say Islam is a religion of extremists. It's the extremists' religion. This religion is, subhanallah, this and that. The followers of this religion are this particular, these type of people. That's how they speak. Exactly the same rule. They are, you feel like that they're taking the knowledge from the same textbooks. They're following the same books or steps, subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this. And the last ayah we've done last, last, in, last, in our last session, do you remember? They said, قَالُوا مَا جِئْتَنَا بِبَيِّنَةً they said, قَالُوا أَجِئْتَنَا لِتَلْفِتَنَا عَمَّا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا وَتَكُونَ لَكُمَ الْكِبْرِيَاءُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا نَحْنُ لَكُمَا بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Look at uh, Fir'aun, what he said to Prophet Musa alayhi salam. He said, we're not going to follow you for two reasons. And I want you to pay attention to these two reasons. He said, we're not going to follow you for two reasons. The first reason is what? When you came to us, or what you came to us with, is going to make us not follow the footsteps of our forefathers. They are playing the victim game. You are trying to make us go stray from the path of our, of our forefathers. This is the first reason why we're not going to follow you. The second reason is this. If we follow you, there's going to be a problem. And what's the problem? You guys will have the advantage. We will lose our advantage. وَتَكُونَ لَكُمَ الْكِبْرِيَاءُ فِي الْأَرْضِ You guys, you will have the upper hand right now. You and Musa and Harun, you will, you will have the upper hand. خلاص, we're going to be losers. We're going to lose the game. That, that, that's exactly what they said to him. Nothing else. قَالُوا أَجِئْتَنَا لِتَلْفِتَنَا عَمَّا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا وَتَكُونَ لَكُمَ الْكِبْرِيَاءُ فِي الْأَرْضِ You will have the upper hand. You will have the grand hand. خلاص, we are losers. Fir'aun and Haman and Qarun, these people, they're not going to be powerful anymore because you guys have changed the rules of the game. And now what's Fir'aun going to do? He's going to use his resources and power. Now Fir'aun is going to go back to his government and say, where are the resources? Now we need to actually use our power. What are we going to do? وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ This is where we started from this morning. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ تُونِي بِكُلِّ سَاحِرٍ عَلِيمٍ so this is a game for Fir'aun. So now he wants to challenge Musa and Harun alayhi salam. So he's going to say to them, guys, you are just magicians. You are not nothing else. And I have plenty of magicians. And I'm going to bring them together. And we're going to destroy you guys. You are nothing compared to my magicians. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ أُتُونِي Because he has the power. He's got the resources. He's got the money. He's got the, the influence. He said, I need to get all the top magicians. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ أُتُونِي بِكُلِّ سَاحِرٍ عَلِيمٍ Bring me every magician who's very knowledgeable. Don't bring me any magician. I want like the elite, the top of the top. Okay? The guys who are the top. I need the best of the best. It's like the big governments like saying we need the top scientists today, you know? The top guys. Okay? In order to prove that Islam is not right, we need like the highest pe pe people who, are, who have reached at the highest levels when it comes to academia. We need those people, the intellectuals, to, to show us that Islam is not the truth. It's exactly, Fir'aun, that's what he was doing. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ أُتُونِي Because we have to apply. The Qur'an is applicable to our times. You have to understand the Qur'an like this. So, وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ أُتُونِي بِكُلِّ سَاحِرٍ عَلِيمٍ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَلَمَّا جَاءَ السَّحَرَةِ When the Sahara came, the magicians when they came, this is a challenge. So they said to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, فَلَمَّا جَاءَ السَّحَرَةِ Musa said to them, قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَىٰ أَلْقُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ مُلْقُونَ Cast, cast whatever you wish to cast. So whatever magic you got, guys, bring it on. Prophet Musa is not scared of them. Bring it on. Whatever you've got, bring it on. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَلَمَّا أَلْقَوْا قَالَ مُوسَىٰ مَا جِئْتُمْ بِهِ السِّحْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَيُبْطِلُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُصْلِحُ عَمَلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ when they did what they had to do, like what, well, look what the Prophet Musa said to them. 
Prophet Musa alayhi salam said to them, what you have produced is mere magic. That's it. Allah will surely make it useless. What you have just done is just magic and nothing else. And Allah is going to make it useless. It's not going to work. Subhanallah. And then he said, Inna Allah sayyutilu, inna Allah la yuslihu amal al-mufsideen. For Allah certainly does not set right the work of the corruptors. People who corrupt things, Allah will not make their work successful. Inna Allah la yuslihu amal al-mufsideen. And then Prophet Musa continued, وَيُحِقُّ اللَّهُ الْحَقَّ بِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ And Allah establishes the truth by his words even to the dismay of the wicked people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make, subhanallah, his word, the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is going to, he is going to establish it. Despite all of that right now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us something very powerful. Look at the next ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the version of the story he just tells us right now in this surah, the version of the story of Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun is not like a, a one which is very detailed. It's like a short version. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now tells us the outcome. What happened after Fir'aun, after Musa alayhi salam became victorious. After Musa alayhi salam became victorious and, and, and the magicians, they, they were defeated and everything. And Fir'aun can see the truth, everything. And the people of Musa also, they can see what has happened. What's going to happen right now? What will be the result? Will people straight away follow Prophet Musa السلام, and, and Harun and say, you guys are the winners of the game. We're going to be on your side. Will people do this? Look at what happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ عَلَىٰ خَوْفٍ مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنَهُ وَإِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ لَعَالٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. Yes, despite of all the things that happened, and Musa alayhi salam being victorious, and then also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proving the falsehood of the false, uh, the, 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 the failure of the falsehood, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proved all of that, do you think just people will automatically follow Prophet Musa alayhi salam, and that's it? Look what happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said the following. فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِّن قَوْمِهِ عَلَىٰ خَوْفٍ مِّن فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنُهُ But no one believed in Musa. Except a few young people of his people. إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِّن قَوْمِهِ Some of the ulama, they said, Durriya here is what? Just a group of young people. Do you know young people are so important? If young people, subhanAllah, take the truth, they are very good. They are very strong. So always like, that's why alhamdulillah we see so many young people come to our masajids. A lot of young people are coming back to Islam. This is, this is the beauty of the, the deen and the truth. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells some of the ulama that said, Dhuriyah here means it's like a group of young people followed him. Not the, not the elders. The elders didn't follow him. It's just a group of young people. The youth. Okay. إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ Only except a few youths. Of his people, those, those were the people who have followed Prophet Musa alayhi salam after all of this. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, while fearing that Fir'aun and their own chiefs might persecute them. Those young people, they still had, they still had fear. Okay? They knew Fir'aun was subhanAllah very powerful. He had secret services that was working for him. He had a lot of soldiers. And okay, they could easily do a lot of bad things to people. Okay? So they were scared of him as well. على خوف من فرعون وملائهم أن يفتنهم. They were scared of the fitna. Subhanallah. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us, وإن فرعون لعالم في الأرض وإنه لمن المسرفين. The ulama, what did they say with regards to the the duriya? What does that mean? This small duriya. Who were they? Okay. Some of the ulama they have said the duriya. These were people who were from the people of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, the Banu Israel. Some of the ulama they said no. These people were not from there. These people, they were from the people of Fir'aun. But they were a group of young people from the people of Fir'aun followed Prophet Musa alayhi salam. But not the elders. The elders didn't follow him. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here he tells us, subhanallah, and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is given, subhanallah, tasliyah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was given a consolation. Him and his companions. Remember when these verses were revealed, where was the Prophet sallallahu Was he in Medina? He was in Mecca. When the Prophet was in Mecca, was he powerful or weak? He was very weak. The Prophet and his companions were being persecuted in Mecca this time. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these ayat, these ayat they empower the Prophet. They give the Prophet a comfort. They give subhanAllah the Prophet a consolation. 
They, they, they t- these ayat are telling Prophet Muhammad وسلم, what you are going through is not new. What you are going through right now is what the previous prophets have gone through and their people. Okay? Take it easy. If you don't have many followers right now, you are Muhammad, do not feel despair. Khalas, don't say, oh, I'm going to, what's the point? I've been, I've been doing 13 years of da'wah and I only have 100 people. Do you know how many people were the followers of the Prophet when he was in, Ma- in Mecca? They were very limited. Okay? He didn't have many followers in Mecca, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 13 years of da'wah, maybe he had just maybe 100 people or just over 100 people. And that was it. Subhanallah. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu فَمَا آمَنَ لِمُوسَىٰ إِلَّا ذُرِّيَّةٌ مِّنْ قَوْمِهِ عَلَىٰ خَوْفٍ مِّنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِمْ Okay? The followers will come later on. But now at the beginning things will be hard. It's not going to be easy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. The next ayah. Now Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he has to console his people. His followers, he has to tell them something. Okay? The situation is not easy for them. So Prophet Musa alayhi salam tells them this. وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُ He's giving a speech right now. He's giving a sermon. People, imagine Prophet Musa alayhi salam standing in front of his followers. And they need an inspiration from him. He has to tell them something to keep them going. Otherwise, they're going to stop. Okay? They will feel khalas. There's no way to go. So Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he has to empower his people and inspire them. And look what he says to them. Ya qawm, my people, listen to me right now. Ya qawm, in kuntum amantum billah. If you guys are telling the truth and you have really believed in Allah and your iman is a serious iman and you really mean it and it's not just kind of like a lip service, a lip service, and you really, really mean it? You need to do the following. In kuntum amantum billah, fa'alayhi tawakkalu. Put your trust in Allah. He tells them straight away. Guys, do you really believe? Yes. Put your trust in Allah. Prophet Musa alayhi salam didn't say to them like, oh, I've got a solution. I'm going to bring the, an army and we're going to crush these people down. No, no. He said, if you truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to put your trust in him. His plan is the best plan. As Muslims right now, a lot of, a lot of things are going bad. Yeah. Okay? So many suffering. Subhanallah. This, a lot of Muslims are going through so much pain. And as Muslims, by extension, wherever we are, we are going through the pain. Especially it's in front of us. Look at what is happening to our brothers in Palestine. Yeah. It's serious yeah. stuff. I don't, I don't know what we're going to say in the next life. Subhanallah. Imagine when Muslims meet in Jannah and we are asked, like the Muslims are talking to each other, what period of time did you live? What are you going to say? <laughs> what are, we gonna, are we going to be very proud of our time? Are we going to say, wow, our time was fantastic. We had good time. Inshallah, Muslims were doing really well. Ah, what was your time like? Oh, we, we, used to, we used to get live streamed, subhanAllah. We used to get, we used to see everything. A lot of bad things happening to our fellow Muslim brothers. Oh, what did you do about it? Uh, not really much. So, just imagine, so, it's going to be very embarrassing. Just imagine Muslims in Jannah talking, and say, like, what, 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 what used to go on, subhanAllah? What, what period of time were you alive? SubhanAllah. So just, just imagine that. Now we are seeing what's going on. Allah, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, what is he saying to his people? If you don't have power, you have to put your trust in Allah. Sometimes if you don't have, you can't do anything sometimes. Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he's telling his people, guys, we can't do anything right now. Okay, we have to put our trust in Allah. وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ This is the condition. If you are really Muslims, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very powerful. And then, what is the response of his, uh, the response of his people? فَقَالُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا They said, we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We trust Allah. فَقَالُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْنَا And then they immediately make dua. رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ This is the dua. Okay? So they say to, they say to Prophet Musa alayhi salam, we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we still have to make, we have to take all the necessary steps this is very important. You know, putting your trust in Allah doesn't mean that you don't do anything. You just sit down at home and you say, oh, I put my trust in Allah. Go to work. No, no, Allah is going to provide for me. I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't have to work. Go to university, study. No, 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 I don't have to study. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to provide for me. But you have to do some action. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to provide for you just like that. Look, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, when he told his people, guys, you have to be patient. Okay, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now they're still making dua. Rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lil qawmi dhalimin. Oh Allah, don't make us fitna for the dhalimun. What does this ayah mean? The ulama, they gave this ayah different interpretation. Some of the ulama that said what they mean is, Oh Allah, don't make us very weak and give the kuffar so much power over us that they think that they are upon the truth and we are upon falsehood because we are so weak. Subhanallah. So they say like, don't misguide these people who have the power because they would believe like since they have the power and we are so weak, maybe they would think that they are upon the truth. They would be deluded to think that they are upon the truth. Or, Ya Allah, don't cause these people who have too much power persecute us so much that we would leave our religion. رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Some of the ulama, they said in the ayah of Surah Al-Mumtahina, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَغْفِرْ لَنَا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَجِزُ الْحَكِيمِ In that ayah, which is similar to this ayah, the ulama, they said, sometimes what happens is like when the kuffar, when they have so much power in their hand, and the, the Muslims, those who are upon the truth, they don't have much power, they're very weak. Those Kuffar might actually be misled. They might think they're upon the truth. That's why they have so much power. That's why they have so much power. So they might actually believe that and think that we are upon the truth. These people are upon falsehood. That's why they're so weak. We have the power. Therefore, we are upon the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And not only that, they made another dua. وَنَجِّنَا بِرَحْمَتِكَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Okay? Look at the people of Musa alayhi salam. وَنَنْجِنَا بِرَحْمَتِكَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ So they said, and deliver us by your mercy from the disbelieving people. This is the dua that they have made, the people of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Can you brothers just reflect, just pause for a moment and just compare the state of the people of Musa alayhi salam and the state that we are in today. Subhanallah. Look at how, how similar things are. Subhanallah. The powerful, they had power, they had influence, they had resources, they, they were able to crush the truth. Okay, they used to do that. Okay, but right now, exactly the same thing. There's so much happening. But let me tell you this. Alhamdulillah. What is our consolation right now? What is the beauty? We have the Quran. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the book of guidance. It look the way it gives us guidance. Yeah, we are weak, but it gives us strength. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the stories of the previous nations in order to take inspiration from them. And also to remember our identity is their identity. Subhanallah, the Islamic identity. These great prophets, what, what do we share with them? The identity. Okay? We belong to the same group. Subhanallah. Like we've mentioned in the khutbah yesterday, when we were talking about the importance of knowing your identity. Subhanallah. Allah gave us the Islamic identity, which is so powerful. This is the, the best identity that, can anyone, that anyone can have. The best identity that someone can possess is the Islamic identity. Why? Because this, is, this was the identity of all the righteous people. This is the identity that Allah wants for us. SubhanAllah. <laughs> وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَإِنَّ حِزْبَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ You're on that side. You're on the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're on the side of the prophets. You're on the side of the righteous people. You're on the side of the people who establish the prayer. Subhanallah. You're on the side of people who give zakah. And you are on the side of what? وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who are allies with Allah and His Messenger and those who have iman, they are the ones who will have the final victory. They will have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he say? Musa alayhi salam in Surah Al-Araf. Qala Musa liqawmihi sta'inu billahi waspiru. Inna al-arda lillah yurithuha man yasha. Wal-aqibatu lil mutaqeen. Who's going to have the final laugh? The final victory? It will be for the mutaqoon. It's a promise from Allah. Do you know what's happening right now? Recently, I've heard an atheist lady. She used to be a 
a Muslim, she left Islam, she became an atheist, and now she's kind of like coming back. She's coming back to uh, Christianity. <laughs> she's kind of like doing a U-turn. Hopefully she'll come back to Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her guidance. Say, I mean, we want, every, we want guidance for everybody, okay? This lady, she left Islam and she wrote books and she said, oh, Islam is this. And she was promoting atheism and she used to be like considered to be one of the kind of like the top advocates of atheism. And, and, the, she, and guess what happened? Recently she came out. She said, I am no longer an atheist. So what are you then? I am actually a Christian right now. Oh. So you left Islam, you went to atheism, now you are leaving atheism. Okay, where are you going to? Where is your destination? My next destination is to Christianity. And then Richard Dawkins was brought, like uh, the, the top guy of atheism in our times. He was brought, and he was, he was brought to debate this lady. They used to be on the same team before. Now she's kind of like she's going to another team. She's playing for another team right now. And then he asked her, why did he become a Christian? You were like on the same team. You were an atheist. I was an atheist. You were a clever person. You were promoting atheism for a while. And what made you leave atheism? And she said the following. This is a very powerful lesson for all of us. Look at what she said. She said, I came so close to killing myself and committing suicide. She said, I could not bear to live anymore. She said, I found living unbearable while I was practicing atheism. She said, it's unbearable. She said, I just couldn't kill myself. Other than that, I wanted to kill myself. I was just too scared to kill myself because it's not manageable. It doesn't work. Atheism, she said, does not work. She said the human being needs a religion. Without a religion, you're not going to survive. And she said to Richard Dawkins, you and your people, you don't have a solution for the people. You are just promoting atheism, and it's not a problem, it's not a solution to our problem. And guess what else she said? She said we were wrong when we were fighting religions. When we were ridiculing religions and we were saying people don't need religion, we were wrong. People need religion, she said. And the other thing that she said is what? The following. This is what gives you a consolation. It gives you, alhamdulillah, and comfort. Look what she says. She said the following. She said our elite universities, where we were educating young people, where we were educating young people, and we were making them liberals, and we were teaching them the ethics of liberalism and, and, and secularism, and these prestigious universities, they are no longer under our control, she said. They have been taken over by people who say to our young people, we have solutions to your problems. Who does she mean? Who do you think she means the young people, the elite of the elite who used to go to our elite universities, they have been taken over by another group of young people who tell them, we have solutions to your problems. Who are these young people? Muslims. <laughs> the best defense is what? To attack. She's like saying, the young Muslims right now, they are the ones who have the upper hand. They're the ones who are telling our young people, guys, you have so many problems, but we have the solution to your problems. <laughs> God, amazing. This is what Islam is. Yep. Islam is a solution to everyone's problems. SubhanAllah. And that lady just admitted, she said like, guys, okay? She said, I just kind of like, she found a bit of peace in Christianity. Okay? She was a Muslim once upon a time. We hope that, inshallah ta'ala, she does a full U-turn, inshallah. And she comes back to her religion and comes back to her senses, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, we want khair for people, okay? Even if they have been really, and uh, subhanallah, quite evil, and, and they have ridiculed the religion of Islam, and they, they, they have shown so much animosity towards Islam, 
yet we still want the best for them. We want them to become Muslims. Remember some of the, compa some of the companions, before they became Muslims, they hated Islam. They used to fight against Islam. They've killed some companions. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to come back and to become Muslims. Subhanallah. Even the Prophet sallallahu when he made dua against certain individuals after the battle of Uhud, what did Allah say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa min al-amri shay. Aw yatuba alayhim, aw yu'adhibahum, fa innahum dhalimun. This matter is not in your hand, ya Muhammad Ali. You are not in control of this matter. Okay, these people, yes, they have caused you so much pain. They have killed Yah and, and, and Hamza right now, and they've done so much evil to him. But don't make dua against them. Maybe Allah will accept the Tawbah one day. The people that the Prophet was making dua against after the battle of Uhud, they became Muslims. <laughs> and, and they became, subhanAllah, the, the, the leaders, the generals, the forefront, mashallah, leaders of the Muslims were after that. And they have, alhamdulillah, spread Islam after that. Okay? So these people who are against Islam today, don't just like say, oh, khalas, I'm going to make dua. Maybe these people tomorrow, they will become Muslims. And they will promote Islam. Subhanallah. And they will help Islam and the Muslims. So inshallah ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu ta'ala has written guidance for anyone who hates Islam today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got the power to bring them back to Islam. So inshallah ta'ala, this as Muslims, alhamdulillah, the truth is in front of us. We have it in our hands. All we have to do is what? Learn, learn the truth and then act upon it and put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tomorrow we're going to continue inshallah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi